Next, a few slides on scatter correction because I didn't say too much about that yet. And I'm gonna illustrate that now. And then we switch to time of flight. So I mentioned previously already that for um, scatter correction in PET, people have first tried to use energy-based scatter correction, but it didn't work very well. At that time, uh, that was with BGO and poor energy resolution. So it could be that now with a much better uh, energy resolution we have in our PET scanners, actually energy-based methods might work, but I don't think many people are trying because we have established scatter correction methods that are based on scatter simulation. And that's illustrated here. So we have a PET sinogram. And these days, you almost always have a CT because if you buy a PET scanner, it normally comes with a CT. So that means uh, this is the input we have. And now we uh, want to make a scatter correct reconstruction. So the first thing we do is compute an attenuation sinogram from the CT. And for that, we have to convert the CT image to attenuation at 511 kilo electron volt. And that conversion is necessary because the CT uses photons of much lower energy. Then we get that attenuation sinogram. And so here white means one, no attenuation, and all the dark values are smaller than one because there is a lot of attenuation there. Too. So this represents the fraction surviving the tissue attenuation, the fraction of the photons surviving tissue attenuation. With this information, we can make a first uh, MLM reconstruction. Now, this image is going to have too much activity, and the reason is that. Part of the counts in that sinogram are not due to trues, but to scatters. So we should have not used them. They're still in there, so we overestimate the activity. But OK, we assume it's not too bad. So based on this, we can estimate the scatter. So we have the, an estimate of the activity. We have an estimate of, uh, we have the attenuation image. So we can put that in the simulator. And the simulator will now uh, simulate uh, how the scatter is being, being formed. So for example, it says uh, photons, two photons will be emitted here. One goes directly in, into the detector. The other one is scattered here and goes here. And then we know that activity is in there. So with Monte Carlo, that would take forever, but would be very accurate. Um, papers have been made to say, well, we can do this a lot faster with a lot of variance reduction techniques. This can be computed in minutes. So now we got a scatter sinogram. So now we can start all over again, because recall this one contains the scatter and our first uh, activity image was wrong because of that scatter. So we can do a better job now. We can now make an MLM reconstruction where we account for the scatter and that term goes here. So in every forward projection, we take the image forward projected and then add the scatter that we get from the scatter sinogram. And that should be identical to the measured sinogram. Now, if you make an image like that, this image is going to be an underestimation, but it's going to be better than the previous one. Now it's an underestimation because we overcorrected it for scatter, and we overcorrected it for scatter because this scatter estimate was based on too much activity in the image. So now we're going to have not enough activity. And next time, uh, too, too much activity again. But this is going to, uh, it's oscillating, but also converging very quickly quickly and in just a few iterations, actually the thing converges and, uh, and more iterations would not change anything. So for brain, um, you can nicely see the, the scatter tails because uh, yeah, this, this is the for projection of the activity in the head. And here, these LORs do not go through the patient. So they have, should not have seen activity. Um, and so this is the measured sinogram. This is the estimated scatter sinogram. And here you see some profiles. I think they were obtained by adding everything. And you see that this uh, scatter explains why there is activity outside the patient. So here the scatter is not too bad, although it's still more than uh, almost 20%. In, in um, scans of the thorax and the abdomen, the scatter contribution is uh, relatively large even. So you definitely need to correct for quantification. So um, visually, it's not too bad. So this is an image uh, that, that has been reconstructed 
correcting for scatter, and here is one not correcting for scatter. And they look similar, or you, although you see the activity is a bit higher here than here. And if you draw a profile, you see it's significantly higher. But if you want to do um, tracer kinetic modeling and quantify the metabolism here, then you definitely need to correct for scatter because this overestimation of the activity is going to lead to an overestimation of um, the metabolism. 